Do you often find your highly detailed 3D print models look like this rather than this? Well, chances are you've been doing supports wrong. And it might not even be your fault, you're just limited by the options your slicer software gives you. So today I want to talk about the absolute necessity of using multi-size supports, especially when printing very big but detailed models. Now we all know that SLA printing gives us the power to create stunningly detailed models, capturing every intricacy of your designs. But here's the kicker. Achieving that level of precision requires more than just a stellar design and a good 3D printer. It's all about mastering the art of support structures. Think about it. Not every part of your model demands the same level of support. Some areas require robust, sturdy supports to prevent any wobbling or potential layer shifts during the print process. On the flip side, those delicate, finely detailed sections need a gentler touch to avoid damaging the very essence of your design. Using a one-size-fits-all approach for support structures can lead to disasters. From misaligned layers to broken details. Trust me, I've been there and it's quite frustrating to see hours of work go down the drain due to inadequate support planning. In this video I'll be sharing some invaluable insights into why using multiple size supports is crucial for successful SLA 3D printing. We'll explore the challenges, showcase the benefits and most importantly, I'll walk you through the process of implementing this technique in your own prints. Alright folks, now let's get hands on with a model and tackle the challenge of implementing multi-size supports. I am going to use Prusa Slicer since that is usually my go-to solution. This is a bit of a workaround, so bear with me. We are starting with identifying areas that need stronger supports, manually adding them and then repeating the process for delicate details. So first things first, let's identify the areas that require stronger supports. These are usually the large heavy sections of our model that could lead to instability or layer shifts during the print. But first I'm going to go to print settings, select supports and check the pinhead front diameter, head penetration and pillar diameter and make sure that those values are ok. Now I'm going to go to the drop down menu for the pad and make sure that below object is selected. And now I can start to manually add robust supports to those sections. Now the downside of this process is that we are limited to one type of support in each iteration. So I'll export the partially supported model and import it again to continue with the next step. So let's just do that now. Next up, let's identify the delicate areas of our model that require finer supports to preserve those intricate details. For example, tiny overhangs and such. But first, once again, we have to go to print settings, supports and to the pinhead front diameter and the head penetration and dial it down a little bit. Then we have to change the settings for pad from below object to around object. Now we are ready to manually add those smaller supports, but once again, we are stuck with one single preset for the support structures. So we have to export this version again and re-import it to continue the process. It's very tedious, I know.
so let's now re-import the model and crap. I think by now you have realized that the need for repetitive iterations is a glaring flaw in this process. We have to keep exporting, importing, and in the editor of course for different sections. And that's very time consuming and the constant back and forth can lead to errors and frustration. Like in this case. So let's fix that by cutting away the stuff we don't need. But if things get real bad, you might find yourself doing things like this. Introducing you to support structures with Blender. Yeah, it can get that bad that you have to manually edit your support structure in Blender or any other software. So if you will excuse me for a while, I have to update the meme to something like this. Or maybe this one is more fitting even though I haven't reached the later stages yet. If you by any chance have been there, let me know what they are like in the comments. But enough memeing around. You might wonder, is all of that pain actually worth it? I want to come back to that at the end of the video. But before I do that I want to provide a piece of constructive criticism. I'm going to suggest a feature for use cases like these. What if we could define and save different support presets with specific settings and easily switch between them while manually adding or editing supports? You could define the parameters for your supports here like you did before, but then you add a single button here which allows you to save them as a preset. The benefits are clear, time savings and less frustration during the support generation process. When you want to print a model that requires different kind of supports, having the ability to switch between custom presets on the fly would be a game changer. And when we are back here, the feature could look something like this. A checkbox which says use presets and then an additional drop down menu where you can select from the presets you have created before. But what do you think about this suggested feature? Would it make your 3D printing workflow smoother? Share your thoughts in the comments below. But now back to the question. Is all of that manual editing of supports actually worth it? For that, let's take a look at the finished model after almost 7 hours of printing. I have used three different support presets, so to say, on this model. The pillar diameter on all of them was 0.8mm. Then the values for both the pinhead front diameter and head penetration were 0.6mm for the big supports. 0.4mm for the middle ones and 0.2mm for the small ones. So on the first glance it looks pretty good. Almost all of the details did come out very nicely. It was definitely not a total print failure. The only flaw I would notice here is this one visible layer shift about halfway up on this model. But I'm going to address that a little bit later. Ok, let's go into a more detailed analysis. We have smaller tips on the anchor compared to the rest of the hull and very small ones on these details here as well. On the hull for stability issues they are the very big ones. But let's cut to the deck now. I think there the difference can be seen way better. Just compare the supports on the breakwaters and compare them to these ones here. Imagine having to use bigger tips it would be impossible to preserve all of those details and this is a testament to the power of well calibrated supports. But what about that print failure on the anchor chain you ask? It looks like it's missing supports. And I don't have an answer for that. Yet. Heck I even went back to the slice file to figure out what the issue was. It must have been somewhere around here but I still couldn't find out what went wrong. But that's actually a very easy thing to fix post print. Now on to this layer shift. I printed the entire model twice and it occurred on both of them. By the way the same goes for the anchor chain. And when something like that happens I get curious because there's no way this could happen by chance. And when I get curious I'll start to investigate. But this time it didn't lead me anywhere. And if the solution was out there I would probably have found it, as I usually do. There seems to be nothing weird in the slice file, at least not that I can tell. 
and the model in and of itself is okay as well and even on the forums and reddit I wouldn't find what I was looking for. So all I can do for now is just to write that off and fix it post print. But that shouldn't take away from the main point that in my opinion using multi-site supports are absolutely worth the effort. Especially when you need to preserve very intricate details. But what do you think? Is that an issue you can relate with? Or have I gone completely off the rails? Just let me know in the comments.